Hello and welcome to Black History Beyond the Textbooks. Today, we will be discussing the life and legacy of Daisy Bates, a civil rights activist who played a leading role in the Little Rock integration crisis of 1957. Daisy Bates was born on November 11, 1914, in Huttig, Arkansas. She grew up in southern Arkansas in the small sawmill town of Huttig. Her mother Millie Riley was murdered when Daisy was an infant and the girl was given care to her mother's close friends, Orly Smith, a World War I veteran, and his wife Susie Smith. Her father Hezekiah abandoned her, and Daisy never saw him again. At the age of eight, Bates learned that her birth mother had been raped and murdered by three local white men. Learning that no one was prosecuted for her mother's murder stoked Daisy's anger about injustice. Her adoptive father, Orly Smith, told her that the killers were never found and that the police showed little interest in the case. Daisy wanted vengeance. She later wrote, My life now had a secret goal, to find the men who had done this horrible thing to my mother. Bates' childhood included attendance in Huddig's segregated public schools, where she learned firsthand the poor conditions to which black students were exposed One, She eventually became a journalist, publisher, and civil rights activist who played a leading role in the Little Rock integration crisis of 1957. In 1941 she married Elsie Bates, an insurance salesman and former journalist, and together they moved to Little Rock. In 1942 she joined her husband on the weekly newspaper he had launched the previous year, the Arkansas State Press. The newspaper focused on the need for social and economic improvements for the black residents of the state and became known for its fearless reporting of acts of police brutality against black soldiers from a nearby army camp. The Batizas' insistence on publicizing such information led many white business owners to cease placing advertisements in their paper. Despite the loss of revenue, the couple continued to produce their publication. As a public and highly vocal supporter of many of the programs of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, Bates was selected in 1952 to serve as the president of the state conference of the organization's Arkansas branch. After the U.S. Supreme Court deemed segregation unconstitutional in 1954, she led the NAACP's protest against the Little Rock School Board's plan for slow integration of the public schools and pressed instead for immediate integration. She personally began taking black children to the white public schools, accompanied by newspaper photographers who recorded each instance when the children were refused admission. In 1957, nine black students enrolled at Little Rock Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Their attendance at the school was a test of Brown v. Board of Education, a landmark 1954 Supreme Court ruling that declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. The students were initially prevented from entering the racially segregated school by Orville Faubus, the governor of Arkansas. Daisy Bates played a crucial role in supporting these students, who became known as the Little Rock Nine. She carefully vetted the group of students and determined they all possessed the strength and determination to face the resistance they would encounter. In the weeks prior to the start of the new school year, the students participated in intensive counseling sessions guiding them on what to expect once classes began and how to respond to anticipated hostile situations. Bates' work on behalf of the Little Rock Nine brought national attention to the civil rights movement, and helped pave the way for further desegregation efforts. Daisy Bates received many awards for her activism and community work including 
the Arkansas General Assembly Commendation, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women's Candace Award, 1984, the National Council of Negro Women, Women of Year Award, 1957, Daisy Bates passed away on November 4, 1999, at age 84 due to a heart attack. She is buried in the Haven of Rest Cemetery in Little Rock. Thank you for watching this episode of Black History Beyond the Textbooks about Daisy Bates. We hope you found it informative and engaging. Now we have two questions for you. What do you think was Daisy Bates' greatest contribution to civil rights? How do you think her early life experiences shaped her activism? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more informative content about black history beyond the textbooks.